Much like any other form of investment or income, if you make money on the stock market, you are going to owe the tax department money. And today we're going to go through the basics of tax with regards to stocks in Australia. How's it going guys, Ryan here and welcome back to another investing video and today we're talking about the topic of tax and the different types of tax that apply to the stocks and the stock market in general when you're investing or trading in Australia. But before we get into that guys, please remember to give this video a thumbs up, it helps me out so much with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more investing, stock market and wealth management content. We talk about all that cool stuff and more including the news of what's going on in the world at the moment as well as some investment tips that you may find useful. So without further ado guys, let's get straight into today's video. So the first thing we need to understand is what actually is a stock because that by definition will allow us to understand what type of tax is applied to stocks. So if we're talking about a stock, it is a portion of a company that you own. You literally own a share of a company. As a result, it is classed as an asset. And the type of tax that applies to this type of thing is called CGT, also known as capital gains tax. When we talk about CGT, there are two key elements that you need to take into consideration. The first of which is capital gains and the second of which is capital losses. So a capital gain is effectively where you purchase an asset. So let's say you purchase a stock and then you sell it for a greater value than what you bought it for. That difference or your profit is what a capital gain is. Now, capital losses are the polar opposite. So if you purchased a stock and you sold it for a lower value than what you originally purchased for, that is considered a loss or a capital loss. And effectively, that means you don't owe tax on that portion, obviously. Now, the interesting thing when it comes to capital gains and capital losses is they offset themselves. So for instance, if you made $50,000 profit on a stock by buying and selling it, that means you would technically owe $50,000 taxable to the tax department. If you had made a loss of $50,000, that means you can offset that profit you've made with the loss and you don't owe any tax at all because technically you've not made a profit. Whereas in the first scenario, you owed tax on $50,000. As opposed to the second scenario where you made a loss, you've offset that profit completely that you made because you've actually not made any money in that financial year. And the beautiful thing about capital losses is you don't need to apply them to your current taxation year. So let's say if you finished a year of stock market trading or investing, and you ended up with a capital loss at the end of it, that means you can keep carrying over that capital loss year on year until you make profits that exceed that value. Effectively, that means any profits you make up until the point at which you have hit that amount of capital loss, they are not taxable at all, so you pay 0% tax. Now, this is where it gets even better. If you bought a stock held it for longer than 12 months, that being the key period here, longer than 12 months, and you sold it for a profit, instead of paying the full amount of tax on that profit, you only pay 50% of the tax. This is known as the CGT discount method and is one of the best ways as an individual that you can save money on tax. So for instance, if you're about to sell a stock and you've held it for 11 months, but you don't envisage the price is going to drop significantly and it's gonna hover around the same price, or maybe it could potentially go up in value. Make sure you wait that additional month or however many days it is because you'll pay 50% less tax than you would if you sold it at that very moment. So the CGT discount method is something that I would highly recommend that you keep in the back of your mind when you are looking to sell shares. And for instance, if you have kept accumulating a set of shares in a single company over a period of time and you wanna sell a portion, 
make sure you sell the portion that is potentially the oldest. And the reason I say this is, if for instance, you have held the first portion you've bought for over 12 months, and you haven't held the second portion or the third or however many it is, sell that first portion because you've already managed to cut your tax rate by 50%. Conversely, if you are looking at potentially not holding stock for that long, then effectively you should sell off the ones you more recently bought. So for instance, if you have bought your original package at 10 months ago, so it's two months away from that CGT period, and you've invested a bit more along the way, but you want to just you know get rid of half your investment, for instance, and that's all those additional buys, sell those instead, because then you can still hold on to that one, which is 10 months, and you can wait and wait and wait until the point at which it clicks over that 12 month period. That way you're not starting from scratch all over again, and you can use the CGT discount to your advantage. So this CGT discount only applies to you if you're an individual investing. Now, if you are a company, a few different tax rules apply. Now, the first of which is you don't get that CGT discount. If you hold stocks for over 12 months, you don't get the 50% discount. But what you do get is a flat rate of a maximum of 30% that you owe on every single capital gain that you make. So instead of potentially paying, you know, the high tax threshold in the, you know, 42 point whatever percent it currently is sitting at, that means you're only paying a flat rate. Because remember, as I said before, if you are an individual, it comes off your individual income rate. And if you're exceeding certain tax thresholds, that means that is the rate at which you're going to be paying. As a company, on the other hand, you're just paying that flat 30%. Now, this is a benefit for individuals such as traders who are making a very high number of transactions over time. And if you're making a lot of money, then it is a benefit to go just for that lower 30% tax rate. A trader, for instance, is purely in there for the short term. None of the stocks that they hold will be over 12 months, or they shouldn't be. They're not a very good trader if they are. They're an investor, actually. Whereas if you are a long-term investor, it's most likely more beneficial for you to uh, invest as an individual so that effectively you are able to claim that 50% reduction or the CGT discount, as they call it. Another thing to keep in mind as well is the fact that a stock is an asset. And if you make capital gains and capital losses, that effectively means you can use these to offset against other areas. So for instance, if you invest in real estate, that means you can effectively offset your capital losses in your stocks against your capital gains in your real estate or vice versa. Because they're both classed as assets, means that you can apply the capital gain and capital tax rules to them. So make sure you take these into consideration. You can start to see where operating as an entity or a company rather is potentially more beneficial if you're making a lot of money, purely due to the fact that you can offset against a lot more things. For instance, if you are a company and you have a company vehicle, that can be offset against your capital gains on the stocks. Effectively, to summarize this whole video up, there are four key elements you need to report on. How much you bought a stock for, how much you sold a stock for, the income a stock has generated, such as through dividends, and the expenses involved in keeping or managing those stocks. So it's very important to understand that obviously, if you are making a capital gain in the sense of effectively you buy and sell, and it's a profit, that's a capital gain, but also if you're earning an income from the stocks in the sense of a dividend, that is also a capital gain, you're making money from your asset. But on the other hand, for instance, if you have a uh, financial manager, for instance, who is managing your portfolio for you for whatever reason, or a stockbroker that's managing your portfolio on your behalf, that is an expense which can be claimed against your capital gains because effectively it's a it's not a capital loss but it's an expense you're offsetting your expenses 
And once again, you can see that you can have benefits both from the perspective of operating as a company, as well as operating as an individual because you can apply different tax rules to each. So for instance, if you bought a new computer, for instance, as a company that is specifically dedicated to stock market trading or investing, you can claim that as a tax write-off. As an individual, if you subscribed, for instance, to a monthly newsletter that is related to stocks and it's all to do with stock research and stock management and all that sort of stuff, that may be a potential tax write-off that you can claim there as well. So you need to look into these things. The more you earn, the more you learn. That is effectively the synopsis of this. And the key aim here is to legitimately reduce the amount of tax that you owe the tax department. That is obviously what everyone wants to do. But one thing I do always say is tax problems are good problems to have. If you have a large tax problem, that means you've probably made a large amount of money. And that is a very, very good problem to have. So guys, that wraps up today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please remember to like this video. It helps me out so much. And subscribe for more content like this. I'd love to know your thoughts on today's video as well down in the comments section below. And with that, guys, I hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you next time. Cheers.